let Bilbo join right here. And actually that would be saving the database. Now we're at that point, we can save data into the database, but we don't have the validation anymore and we don't get the real clients from the database. We are still using partly in memory database right here in our backend, meaning that we're still using this guy right here. And we'll just slowly t start removing that step by step. I won't take everything at once. I'll just move it step by step. And let's just complete the add client one that we're already working with right here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll say, I don't want to do validation like this anymore. I actually want to start using the repository instead to do the validation. So let's start by actually getting the client from the database and let's just call it client from DB and we'll make an equal right here. And then I'll do a this dot client repository. And then you're using the term find one because we want to find find one specific thing in the database. And since the nickname right now is unique, we can actually search using that nickname. So what I'll do is I'll use the nickname right here and I'll search for that nickname. By the way, just a small thing if you don't know it already, if you're making an object like this and the nickname or the property has the same name as the property from the outside in our parameter right here, you actually don't need that property. It'll just automatically put in that property for you if you don't want to use that. So that's just a hint. If you see stuff like this, it means that the nickname is the same name as the actual property on the object you're trying to search for. But let's just keep the nickname here. I just think it's nice so we can read it. Let's just try and use this now. Let's say client db dot and then you would expect a nickname or an ID. But again, notice and remember what we're getting back right here is actually a promise. And we didn't wait for the promise to complete. So this guy is not a client right now, it's actually a promise. I can actually prove that by mousing over. It says it's a promise. So what we have to do is of course, call the wait, and then this will actually convert into a client again. So now that we have the client available, let's just do an if check right here. If there's not a client DB, that means that the client does not exist. If that's the case, we're just going to do everything that we did when we didn't find a client. So that'll be all this code down here. We'll just move that up. And there we go. Now we found look for a client that doesn't exist. So we'll go and create him. That's how our code works right now. We'll continue. If it did find a client, we'll make another if statement. If the client actually has the ID that matches the ID we're getting from the outside, if it's the same client that we, we are going to add that we are already logged in with, then we should just return that chat client. So we, we can throw an error, but I'm just going to return the client. And again, have to remember this client right here needs to be a chat client. So we need to kind of map this into a chat client. And I'll show you how a cool trick next lesson on how you can actually do that if you want to. I have the ID and that's going to be the client's ID. And I have the nickname and that's going to be the client nickname. So that's how we kind of set that up. Now we are saying if there's a client found in the database and he has the ID that we're looking for, then we'll just return a new chat client with that information. So if that's not the case, we are going, we've found a client with a nickname that exists, but he doesn't have the same ID. So that means that we are going to try and create a new client with a wrong nickname. So we'll throw an exception like we did before. So all I've pretty much done is just change the code a little bit and start using the client repository in order to find the client in the database instead of finding the client right here inside the client's array inside the memory setup. So let's try and see if this works. Let's just try and refresh and create another Bilbo right here and execute that one. Now you'll notice instead of getting that exception, I'm getting the nickname already exists instead. So I'm getting a more informative exception from the backend. And I'm actually using my setup right here to go and find that issue right there. Now you can do this in a lot of different ways. I think the most important to take from this session right here is that we are using the await keyword again. And that's very important when we're starting to work with these um, promises to do asynchronous calls. So that's it for this lesson. See you next time.